uh, hopefully by the end of the day. All right, everyone, welcome once again to class. I'm substituting for Dr. Singh today, and I will also substitute on Wednesday. So Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about material related to Chapter 8. And uh, there will be a lab also today at 2 o'clock. So let's write everything down here. All right, so today is March 29th. And, um, well, let me just introduce myself for those that are watching online. Okay, so I'll be your instructor for at least today and Wednesday, and I'm VJ Anthuram. My office is in HSC 214. Okay. And um, uh, it's, it's a very small office. It's the size of a closet. <laughs> so look for a broom closet. That's where I will be. And I will be lecturing for you uh, this Monday and then this Wednesday as well. And uh, what we will cover this week is Chapter 8, okay, Chapter 8 material, as well as I will be teaching the lab, which is today from 2 to 5 p.m. So I believe the threshold here is 8. So if you have 8 students and you're watching this before 2 o'clock, please come to lab. We will take eight of you. If um, you cannot make the lab, watch the video demo to do your lab report. Okay, so uh, you can do the live lab today with myself and Larissa, or you can do the uh, video demonstration. Obviously, the lab, live lab with me and Larissa will walk you through it. Definitely will be uh, much more worth your time. But if not, given everything that's going on in the world. You can watch the video demonstration. I filmed it, and you can watch that to get an idea of what uh, the lab is on. The lab um, actually is on solubility within a family. All right, so um, that's my office. That's who I am. I got my PhD in biochemistry, so I'm not really a general chemist, <laughs> even though this is a general chemistry class, but I think I know enough uh, to get you guys through uh, this week. All right. <clears throat> and let me give you my email uh, once again, uh, just for this week. It's vcantheram at methodist.edu. So my first initial, middle initial, V and C, Anthuram, A-N-T-H-A-R-A-M, at methodist.edu. And that's uh, who you can contact. Well, that's me. Uh, that's who you will contact if you have questions related to Chapter 8. Uh, one more thing I want to mention before I go into the material is that, um, one, this lecture is being recorded. But number two, I also have some other videos on the Canvas site. So um, let me just switch over to the computer here. I know uh, I know that if you're watching online, you're not seeing this. But right now, uh, the students are looking at the Canvas site. And if you look under Chapter 8, you can see uh, my lecture notes. And you can see a whole bunch of videos that we filmed related to Chapter 8. Okay, these videos are about 5 to 15 minutes long, so they're not too much of a strain on your time. You can watch that to get some little extra boost on the material. I'll also have this entire lecture recording uh, available at the end of class. Look for it around this evening, okay, or definitely much earlier than that. But so those are the options that are available to you. Again, uh, for those of you watching online or not attending live, Canvas under Chapter 8, you will see lecture notes and you will see videos related to Chapter 8. All right, I'm going to switch back to, uh, to those of you here. I'm going to switch back to our notes and let's just get started. All right, so. All right, so Chapter 8 deals with the topic of the periodic table. Right, so this is our periodic table. So let me hand out copies uh, of the table to you guys here. Uh, this is a phone book. All 
right. So the periodic table is like a phone book. I don't know if you're old enough to know about phone books. Um, you know, I had phone books growing up. Nowadays, I, I think they're kind of obsolete. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, yellow pages, white pages. It's just a listing. And it was a guide. Now we have the internet, so there's no need for a phone book. But the idea is that the periodic table is a guide. Uh, the way it was constructed, the way it was designed, was that you should be able to pick out, like a snap of your fingers, you should be able to pick out certain types of trends. And the arrangement of the elements also is not by happenstance. Um, the arrangement is based on certain patterns. So what I'm going to teach you Monday and Wednesday is how to pick out the patterns of the periodic table so that you can easily access the information that you need. First and foremost, uh, at least the way I'm going to teach this, you do not memorize anything in the periodic table. Okay? This is not something you memorize. Like I said before, it's a guide. And if you're old enough to remember phone books, that's the best analogy that I could make. It's a guide uh, that allows you to pick up information very, very fast. <laughs> so patterns in the periodic table is what I want to teach you guys today. The first thing I want to tell you guys is, um, you may already know this, this sh should be a review, but if you go down the periodic table, the columns, okay, that's called a group. Okay, so going down, so here we have group 1, also group 1A. Uh, depending on what periodic table you use, uh, they number it straight, 1 all the way to 18. Or they sort of separate it, 1A, 2A, and then you have a big jump to 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A, and then we have the Bs, okay, the Bs. Uh, these Bs over here, the 3B, 4B, 5B, uh, they're generally called the transition metals, also known as the D block elements. Again, you know, looking at a periodic table and picking out things uh, is the goal of today's lecture. So these are called the transition metals, also known as the D-block elements. So I'll write D-block. D-block elements, also known as transition metals. B, 4, B, 5, B all the way to, uh, and then they have to 1, B, and 2, B. There's a sort of gap here. All right. Um, this is not something that you need to really memorize because, once again, we don't memorize the periodic table. We just consult. So the transition metals begin with the group Bs, 3, B, 4, B, 5, B. Um, basically, as you go down the periodic table, we have a group, right? <coughs> um, tell you about group 1 or 1A, depending on whatever periodic table you're using. Uh, that has a special name. These are called the alkaline metals. Alkaline metals. Alkaline metals. It's another name for group 1 or 1A, again, whichever periodic table you're going to use for your exam. So uh, not hydrogen, OK? So <laughs> this is why chemistry is a little bit um, weird, but um, hydrogen, they didn't have a place to put it, so they put it here. Um, but talking really the alkaline metals, group 1 or 1A, the lithium, sodium, uh, potassium, uh, rubidium, and then some periodic tables will actually give you the name of the element, write it out. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, these are all called the alkaline metals. What's special about the alkaline metals or group 1A? is they form plus one ions. They form plus one ions. Okay. So not talking about sodium by itself. Sodium by itself is just sodium. But if it were to form an ion, which is a charged particle, it will form the ion that has a charge of plus one. 
A same thing with lithium, plus 1, if it were to form an ion. Same thing with potassium, K, plus 1. <clears throat> so immediately when you look at the periodic table, you can realize, again, we're picking up patterns, something where you can just easily extrapolate information. Um, all of these will form plus 1 ions, okay, group 1, 1A. Let's talk about group 2, or 2A. <clears throat> These are called alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals, okay, going down group 2 or 2A, again, depending on which periodic table you're using. And these guys like to form plus 2 ions. An ion is a charged particle, and if you are a plus one ion, you release one electron. So these guys, lithium, sodium, potassium, would like to give away one electron. That gives them nobility, quote unquote, it makes them more stable. And these guys, the group 2A, alkaline earth metals, like to form plus two ions. So for them to be, quote unquote, noble, they will give away two electrons. Okay, that allows them to attain noble gas configura configuration. Noble gas configuration. All right, so immediately we know from just looking and grasping the periodic table that these are going to form plus ones. And these guys are going to form plus two. So instead of beryllium, if it were to form an ion, if it were to form an ion, it will be the plus two charge. If this were to form an ion, magnesium, it would be the plus two charge. Okay, I'm not talking about magnesium, the element by itself, neutral. If it were to form an ion, if it were to form a charged particle, it would be a positively two charged particle, a magnesium. Okay, well, magnesium plus two is actually found in our bodies. Same thing with calcium. If it were formed an ion, it would be calcium plus two. We have a lot of this in our bodies, um, strontium, plus two, barium plus two, again, if it were to form an ion. The alkaline earth metals would be plus two in charge. All right, let's skip over to the, okay, let's skip over the transition metal block. And let's, uh, I want to give your attention, or bring your attention, excuse me, to group 17, or again, whatever periodic table you're using, uh, 7A. Okay, these are called the halogens. And halogens would like to form unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, halogens would like to form minus one ions. Okay. Which means, as an ion, I'm not talking about by itself. Okay, an element, as an element, is just neutral. But let's say I want to form an ion and I happen to be a halogen. Well, for me, the best scenario would be to form a minus one ion. And that's what the group 7A elements do. They form minus one ions, which means they don't give away an electron. Instead, they take an electron. So that's how they attain, quote unquote, nobility. They get the uh, noble gas electron configuration. So here, um, they form minus one ions, which means they will take one electron, again, that allows them or establishes them as electron configuration wise as noble. All right. So <clears throat> they have a special name that's called the halogens. Uh, group 16, 6A, again, groups going down. They don't have a special name. They really don't. Uh, but I can tell you that they like to form minus two ions. But no special name. <laughs> Just group 6 or 6A. All right, finally, this uh, group that is special is hopping over from 17 or 7A to 18 or 8A. These are the noble gases. These are the noble gases. 
and uh, they're not going to form ions, okay, under, unless extreme, extreme non-physiologic conditions. Uh, but for Gen Chem, they will not form ions, so no ion formation. And they're stable. Okay, what gives noble gases their exceptional stability in, in terms of making them noble, quote unquote, is that they have a filled electron shells. Okay, filled electron shells. Uh, filled electron shells, filled electron orbitals, however you want to say it. All right, so again, we see the periodic table. I should immediate, immediately recognize that these are the uh, alkaline metals. They form plus one ions. These are the alkaline earth metals. They form plus two ions. Uh, these are transition metals, so they're all over the place with regards to charge. <laughs> A little bit weird and crazy there. For example, iron can be plus two, which is uh, blue in color, and plus three, which is red in color. So there's no, have multiple charges. Uh, these like to form minus two, and then halogens definitely going to form minus one ions. So um, F fluorine by itself is fluorine. Okay, but if I was fluorine and I wanted to form an ion, I would be F minus one. Okay, if I was chlorine and I wanted to form an ion, it would be Cl minus one. Okay, ions. Okay, ions, not elements, ions. If I was bromine and I wanted to form an ion, it would be Br minus 1. It would take the minus 1 charge. And again, these are noble gases. So they have a completely filled shell. All right, so that's going up. That's going down a column. And right, let's talk about going left to right. Okay, let's talk about going left to right, and I'm going to use purple for that. Going left to right. We will call that a period. So going down is a group. Going the rows left to right is a period. Okay. Period. So the period, so row is the row in the periodic table. And um, so we have different rows. So row one will be called n equals one. Okay. Row two will be called n equals two. Row three would be n equals three, so on and so forth. Obviously row four, period four will be n equals four. Okay, so period one um, as period two would be the second row. So fluorine, I know this is blurry, fluorine would be period two. That element is housed in period two. Okay, uh, sodium. What period is sodium in? What row is it in? It's in row three, so it's in period three of the periodic table. So going left to right, we call that a period. It's designated N. I don't know if you did the electron configuration lab, uh, but N also goes by another name. Uh, N is the row number, uh, but also it has another more sophisticated name because they can't just go with row number. They have to give a complicated name for students to uh, anguish over. N is not just a row number, but let's be a little bit more smart <laughs> because we're, I guess we want to talk smart and act smart. So N, instead of calling it row number or period number, pr please also know that it's called the principal quantum number. That's another name for this n equals 1, principal quantum number 1. That's where hydrogen and helium are. Principal quantum number 2, period 2, row 2. That's where fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, neon, lithium, beryllium are. Okay. Um, principal quantum number 3, energy level 3, period 3, row number 3. All of these are the same. But principal quantum number 3 would have elements argon, chlorine, sulfur, phosphorus, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So going left to right is called the period. Let's 
go on to the next page here, page two. All right, so this has to do with the electron configuration map. You can see here, these are going to be NS1. What is N, again, represent? And row number, the principal quantum number. All right, NS2, the principal quantum number. So this element here, I know it's blurry, but this element here, beryllium, would be a 2S2. Actually, it would be what's called helium 2S2. Let's go back to our periodic table here. Okay, beryllium has four electrons. So the way the electrons go marching in, electrons go marching in, hurrah, hurrah. Okay, the two electrons go in, they're helium, and then it's going to be 2s1, 2s2. So beryllium is helium 2s2. Okay, remember the electrons are going to go in in a specific order. Likewise, lithium has three electrons. Okay, well, two of them come from helium, so that's how the electrons go marching in. Hurrah, hurrah, the electrons go marching in. Two of them, the third electron is going to fill in 2s1. So like that, we can go on and do this. This is electron configuration. But another thing we can get from the periodic table is how the electrons go marching in. Okay. This is called the S-block. Okay, so 4s1, 4s2, 5s1, 5s2, 2s1, 2s2. This is called the S block. Here things get a little bit crazy. Uh, we skip from the S block, then the electrons go marching in to the D block, also known as the transition metals. And then finally, we have the P block. And usually this is where all our non-metals are housed. So if you're a non-metal, your electrons are going to really reside in the P block. Okay? S, P, and D are the shapes of these houses, these orbitals where electrons reside. And they have definitely a lot of geometries and shapes. Uh, so but this is called the P block. P. P as in um, <laughs> P as in pi. Okay, pi, P block. Okay, so we have S, D, and then P. Remember, we're going down, that's a group. Left to right is a period. So 2s2. What would um, this element be? This element, magnesium, it would be 3s2. Uh, what about calcium? It would be 4s2. Also, I, I'm going to throw a wrench in here. Uh, not only is this called the D block, I apologize for this, but that's chemistry for you. This is not only called the D block, but this is also known as the N minus 1 D block. Okay, N minus 1 D block. Which means, let's look at calcium for a second. Okay, calcium is in, what period is it in here? Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Calcium is in period 4, row 4. And that's going to be 4s1, 4s2. Where will the next electron go? It's not going to go to 4d, but where will it go? n minus 1. Okay. 3d, right? 3d. So 4s1, 4s2, then 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, and all the way here, we go to the p block. 4D, 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, 3D5, 3D6, 3D7, 3D8, 3D9, 
3D10. After 3D10, where do we go? P. Now we go back to 4P1, 4P2, 4P3, 4P4, 4P5, and then 4P6. Let's pick another example here, strontium. Everyone look at strontium with me. Element right here, strontium. Okay, what row is that in the periodic table? Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5. Okay, what is the principal quantum number? 5. So the electron configuration for strontium will be krypton, 5s1, 5s2. What will be the electron configuration for yttrium? 5s2, is it going to be 5d1? Right, 5s1, 5s2, we're in the d block, what will it be? 4, right? 4d1, 4d2, 4d3, 4d4, 4d5, 4d6, 4d7, 4d8, 4d9, 4d10. Then what comes after 4d10? Where will the electrons go marching in? P. And then we go back to 5. 5p1, 5p2, 5p3, 5p4, 5p5, 5p6. Okay, so that's how the electrons go marching in. Okay? First they'll go to S, then it's n minus 1, n minus 1, okay? And then you resume back to P, okay? See, that's what it says here, n minus 1. So NS2, NP1, NS2, NP2, again, the N stands for the principal quantum number. Let's do one more example here, cesium. Okay. Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6. So this is going to be 6s1. Barium is 6s2. What's the electron configuration for lan lanthanum? Whatever that is called. Okay, so lanthanum has 57 electrons. 54 are from xenon. Then 6s1, 6s2. And then what? Is it 6D1 or 5D1? 5D1. 5D1. Okay, so this is the N minus 1 block. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know if Dr. Singh will teach this to you, but this is the N minus 2 block. Okay. These, uh, these contain N minus 2. These contain uh, F electrons. Okay. While these contain D electrons, that is, the electrons will go and march into the D orbital. If you go down here, these electrons will march into the F orbitals. I do not know if Dr. Singh will teach this to you, but I'll just uh, throw that out there F orbitals. So very, very briefly and very, very quickly, not putting too much emphasis into this, but we have 55, 56, 57, and then what comes after 57? 58, right? So where's 58 at? Bottom, okay? But that's the N minus 2 block, okay? So it's actually 6s1, 6s2, Five D one, and then what F is it? N minus two. What N is it? It's going to be six S one, six S two, five D one, four, four F one, four F one, four F two, four F three, four F four. Right. This is the N minus two block and minus 2. So the electrons are going to go marching in first to 6s, that's 6s, and then they'll go to 4f. Okay, only here, starting here, that's what makes it a little tricky. Starting here, they'll go to 4f, and then from 4f, we go to 5d, and then from 5d, we're finally back to 6p. Okay, 
that's how the electrons are going to go marching in from here on out, from 6 and 7 on out. Again, I don't know, do not know if Dr. Singh will make a big um, emphasis on it. I don't, I tell this to my students, but I don't, um, you know, for, as far as testing is concerned, I just tell them, be aware of this, but I'm not going to test you on F electrons. All right, so the last 20 minutes or so of class, um, let's talk about trends, okay, trends. So I'm going to draw my little periodic table skeleton. Okay, so here's my little periodic table. Skeleton here. Okay, the first periodic trend I want to uh, tell you guys, again, trends. Okay, you should be able to look at a periodic table and pick things up. Okay, S block, P block, D block, F block, how the electrons go marching. Which is plus one, which is plus two, which is minus one, which is noble. Here's another thing that we should know, uh, how the pattern in which these elements are arranged, and that pattern is called shielding. shielding. This is also known as Z of F. Z of F. Okay, Z and its subscript F, EFF, for effective nuclear charge. So let me first give you the trend, and then I will um, explain it to you as best as I could. So this ZFF, effective nuclear charge, also known as shielding, increases across a period. So this is our trend. Increases across a period. And then down a group. It also increases down a group. So what is this effective nuclear charge? OK. Um, well, let me try to explain this to you. Can I get your name? You're Catalina, right? Yes. If that's correct. OK. What is your name, sir? Kirk? Kirk. Kurt? Eric. 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 Why am I hearing Kirk? <laughs> it's the mask. The mask, right. All right, well, Eric and Catalina. Uh, let's pretend you're electrons, OK? Electrons. All right, we know that electrons are an outer orbits, okay, outer orbitals. They can occupy an s orbital, p orbital, or a d orbital. Okay, who do they orbit? Who you two as electrons orbit? Okay, you orbit the nucleus, right, which contains protons and neutrons. And So I'll call you an electron here. Okay. And that's this is where you reside. You're going to reside in energy level 2, okay, period 2, principle quantum number 2. And the other student over there, uh, he's going to reside in principle quantum number 3, let's just say. Okay, this is just an example. Energy level 3, principle quantum number 3. All right, so you guys orbit the nucleus, all right? I'm the center of the, the classroom. OK, I'm the center of, the, of attention. I am the nucleus, all right? I am the nucleus. Get me. Okay. 
<clears throat> so if I'm the nucleus and you guys are the electrons, let's say I scream really loud okay, at the top of my lungs. Okay, study chemistry. Okay, scream it so loud. Ah, study chemistry. Study for your exam. Okay, study, study, study. Who's going to hear that? Is it going to be you in principal quantum number energy level two? You literally are in row two. Or is it him who's in row three? Who's going to hear that? Or is it someone here? Okay, who's going to hear it more? The first row, okay. The first row. Okay, if I yell and scream, "Study chemistry!" Okay, at the top of my lungs, or if I had a bullhorn, or a really loud microphone, "Study chemistry!" Okay, who's going to hear that? Who's going to have their ears ring? Okay, they're going to hear it first. Okay, they're going to hear it first. Who's going to hear it least? The last row. Usually the last row are students that sleep <laughs> or doze off or don't care, right? Yeah, it bothers them the least, okay? This will ring in their ears, this front row, and you, Catalina, it will affect them the most if I yell and scream. Okay, we call these core electrons. Okay, we call these core electrons. So my first row and you in my second row, these would be what are called core electrons. The outer electrons would be where uh, Eric is sitting and the electrons, students behind him, those are, would be called outer electrons. Those are the ones mostly available for bonding. So we have core electrons and we have outer electrons. So uh, let's have an um, orange electron here. That would be like an example of an outer electron. All right, who gets shielded more? Who is shielded from the wrath of me yelling and screaming and off on the top of my lungs or off the top of my lungs? Who gets shielded? The outer electrons. Okay, the outer, outer, outer electrons get shielded. Okay. They don't experience the full charge of the proton. You gotta remember the proton is positively charged. Is it not so? Okay, the proton is positively charged. So here it's being attracted, it's pulling the negative, negatively charged electrons. Okay, but it can't really pull the outer electrons, okay, because the outer electrons are shielded. Much the same way if I yell, study chemistry at the top of my lungs, it's the first row that's gonna hear it. Okay, the second row, third row will hear it, and the outer fourth and fifth and sixth row, they're not going to care. They're not going to get it to the same extent as the core electrons, as the students sitting in the first row. So that's what we say when we talk about shielding, a shielding sort of increasing, this effective nuclear charge shielded. The shielding increases as you increase across a period. Okay? That makes sense because as you increase across a period, as you go across a period, excuse me, as you go across a period, your uh, electrons are increasing. Eight electrons, nine electrons, ten electrons. Getting more outer, outer, outer. Um, here we're getting more of the P electrons getting filled up. But the idea is that as we add more electrons, um, they get more and more shielded. Okay? They, ha they feel less an effect on me. If there were 100 students in this room right now, if I jam-packed 100 students, okay, everyone in the back is going to get less of my ranting and raving than the people in the front. <laughs> okay. right, so that's what nuclear charge is, shielding. Those guys in the back are shielded. Same thing as you go down a group. Okay, as you go down a group, what are you increasing as you go down a group? What gets increased as you go down a group? N equals 1. What's next? N equals 2, what's next? N equals 3, what's next? N equals 4, outer, what's next? 5, what's next? 6, what's next? 
seven, outer, 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 outer. So as you go down a group, you're getting outer, 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 outer. As you go across a period, filling, 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 filling. Okay? Filling more electrons, filling more electrons, filling more electrons. As you go across a period, across a room, filling, more electrons, filling, filling, filling. Less of an attraction to me, the nucleus containing the protons. As you go down a group, outer, 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 row six, row seven, row eight. Okay. Again, same situation. They feel less of an effect of me, the nucleus, having positive protons. They feel less of that pull of the protons. All right, so that's the first periodic trend. There's three more that I want to teach you. And the second one is called the atomic radius. So this is the only one that's a little bit different than the rest. So let's see here, the atomic radius. All right, so this is periodic trends, and this is um, effective nuclear charge. This next one here is the atomic radius. And this periodic trend that I'd like to teach you is the atomic radius, literally the size of the atom. So um, this radius could be um, just, you know, the radius like that. Or sometimes, you know, we have molecules like O, which is not really O. Okay, natural abundance is O2. We have F, which is in our atmosphere, not really F, but F2. Okay, that, for these diatomic molecules, sometimes the atomic radius is just uh, the distance between the centers of the two atoms. So there's really two definitions of the atomic radius. Okay? But in the end, uh, really I just want you to know it has to do with size of the atom. Okay, the size of the atom. Okay. Because some elements are naturally diatomic. Okay, this is the only one that's uh, weird. This is the only one that you have to memorize. Um, down at group, it increases. Okay, just like before, so that's the um, that's uh, that's fine. Just remember, increase down a group. The atomic radius or the size. But this is the one that you're going to have to memorize because it's off. Um, the only one that's different than all the rest. And instead of increasing across a period, it actually decreases across a period, going left to right. Okay, going right to left, it's going to increase, but going left, uh, left to right, it decreases the size of the atom. Okay, so um, explaining why the size or the atomic radius increases down a group is pretty easy. Okay, uh, what is the principal quantum number here? Okay, let's say it's n equals 2. What's the principal quantum number? The next one? 3, outer. What's the next one? 4, Four outer. Five. 5. Are we getting larger and larger and larger? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Now, why does it decrease when we go left to right? Okay. So for that, um, requires a little bit of explanation. So let's go back to our periodic table here. Okay, so we're going left to right. Imagine as you're going left to right in the periodic table. Okay, look where we at. Uh, look where we are at here. We are mostly at the nonmetals. Is it not correct? Okay, the nonmetals, the noble gases. Where are we at here? 
Okay, the metals. Okay, what did we say group 1A as an ion would be? What charge would it be? 1A would form what charge as an ion? They form plus 1 ions, right? Group 1 or 1A would form plus 1 ions. So when you form a plus 1 ion, are you giving away an electron or taking an electron? How do you become plus or how do you become positive? Okay, you give away an electron. Look at this. If lithium becomes lithium plus, it gives away an electron. And what will be its new electron configuration? How many electrons would lithium plus have? You see, we know that lithium has three electrons. How many electrons does lithium plus have? Lithium plus now, not lithium. Lithium has three electrons. Neutral by itself, all alone would have three electrons. Okay, Eric here said he's correct that they f it will form a plus one ion. So it will give away an electron. That's how you become plus one. If you give away two electrons, you become plus two. But my question to you is how many electrons does lithium plus have? Plus one. How many? It has two electrons. Okay, what do we know about helium? Is it a noble gas? Okay, it's noble. Okay. So lithium, by becoming lithium plus, becomes or attains the electron configuration of noble gas helium. So it attains nobility. Same thing with sodium. Sodium by itself would have 11 electrons. Okay, talking about electrons now. As we mentioned before, sodium would like to be sodium plus. So sodium by itself would have 11 electrons. Sodium plus would have 10 electrons. What other element in the periodic table has 10 electrons? All right, so it becomes stable. Okay, It becomes stable. So if you are lithium, and you already said you are, it, you want to be plus one, it wants to give away that electron to become stable like helium. Where do you think lithium or sodium or potassium, all plus one ions, where do you think it would put that electron? Would it be out here? Take it, take it, take me, take me, or would it be over here? Where would it be? Remember, if it gives away an electron, it becomes stable. So where do you think that one electron would be? Would it be out there? Take me, take me, take me, take me. Or would it be like this? What do you think? What would it be like here, right? You give away that electron, it becomes noble. So is it going to be like this? Or is it going to be like this? Outer, correct. All right, so it's going to be like that. Okay, outer, outer. Okay, they give away electrons. What about this? Okay, so these would want to give away the electrons. You guys are correct. If you give it away here, take, take, take. Outer, outer, outer. Okay, what about these guys? What would fluorine like to be? Minus one. Does that mean it takes an electron or gives away an electron? takes. If fluorine takes an electron, how many electrons will it have? Fluorine originally has nine electrons. It will go to ten. So what do you think fluorine is doing with its electrons? It's saying here, 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 take me, take me, take me, or is it trying to say <laughs> grabbing on and trying to get that last one to get to nobility? Which one is it? They're like, take me, take me, take me. Or I'm going to pull, pull, pull to get to that 10th electron. Pulling. They're pulling to be more like this. If you're more like this, are you smaller or larger? 
smaller. Okay. That's why as you go across a period, you're kind of put kind of getting those electrons. Okay, you right? You are, are trying to get to nobility. You're trying to get to the electron configuration of your noble gas. Especially in this area of the periodic table. That's why these almost certainly would be minus two. These would almost certainly be minus two. These would almost certainly be minus one, right? They're pulling, pulling, pulling. They're what's called electronegative, okay? So if you are electronegative or pulling, you don't want to be large, okay? You're pulling. So you're trying to, ex ex um, you're trying to be pulling things, and when you're pulling things, in this case, talking about electron density, you're going to be smaller. You see that a lot with the P block, the P block. Now, if you're the S block, you're giving away things. Here, take this electron. Just take it, take it, take it. And when you do so, you are going to be larger. Okay, these guys are givers. Take that electron. Literally putting it out <laughs> in the parking lot. Free electron. Take it. These guys have their electrons all the way in the living room. And they want to, like a vacuum cleaner, trying to suck that last electron to get to the noble gas configuration. Okay, so that's the reason why the size decreases as you go left to right. They decrease across a period. They increase, increase down a group again because you're getting outer, 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 outer. All right, we have two more trends that I'm going to be talking about, and I will do that on Wednesday, and uh, I will see you all on Wednesday. Okay, I will have a copy of these notes emailed to you and the class, and um, have a good day, everyone.